What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video on Cell Med. And if you can tell, this is not the usual room that I film in. I have moved down to Columbus, Ohio, but that's going to be saved for another video. But in this week's video, I want to talk about three extracurriculars that I was involved in and I got the most out of during my time in undergrad. So to hop right into it, the first extracurricular that I got involved in during my time in undergrad was working in an undergraduate research lab, specifically studying proteins that are involved in neurodegenerative diseases. And if you haven't checked out my video on that, a day in the life of me doing research in this lab, go ahead and check that video out. You guys might like it. Make sure to hit that like button and make sure to share it with people who are interested in the field of research. I think the best part of being involved in research at such an early stage was I saw myself literally develop into a independent thinker. So at first I started off really not knowing what was going on in the lab, what I was doing, the reason what I was doing it for, to towards the end of my senior year, I started to formulate my own hypotheses, coming up with possible reasonings for why this is happening, why this isn't working, what are some possible things that we should be doing, to you know guiding underclassmen, people who were in the lab who were younger than me, um, going through different techniques, why we're doing it, how to do it properly. And you really saw, or I personally really saw myself grow. And that's something that I really recommend for people who are going into pre-med or anything STEM related, is go ahead and try and set your foot into research. If you don't like it, then you don't have to keep on doing it. But I personally got a lot out of that experience and I really encourage everyone that I talked to really get that experience of doing undergraduate research. On top of that, if you're interested in going to medical school, and this really didn't apply to me because I was already accepted from high school, but if you want to go to medical school, getting involved in research and especially publishing research looks absolutely amazing on that resume. And let me tell you why. So number one is when that medical school sees that you're involved in research, they want you in their school. Why? Because that means that you can continue different types of research because you've had that experience and you were good enough to publish that now they could use you to publish research with their school name on that paper. So it makes their school look a lot better. So schools, especially medical schools, really, really like to see that you are involved in research. Now that doesn't mean, I'm not saying that you have to publish, but it just shows that you're involved in it and that you have some interest in it and you know how research works. You have the experience coming in. So they want students that can make their school look better. And again, if you want to get into medical school, get involved in research. Number two, medicine is built on research, right? Everything that we know in the field of medicine is all based on research. So if you can show these medical schools that you are involved in early on, then they want you in their school. And research is gonna carry on all through residency. So even if you do undergraduate research, even when you apply for residency, in your fourth year medical school, that undergraduate research that you did is still gonna carry weight all the way through residency and even fellowship for that matter, right? Because it's gonna show that you were involved in it and you were interested in it, even when you were a freshman or sophomore or junior in college. So make sure to get involved in research if you're interested in any field of medicine and again, if you don't like it, don't force yourself to like it. Not everyone's going to like research. It's not for everyone. But then there are different types of research that you can get into. There's bench work, there's clinical, there's writing case reports. And I'm not going to get too much into that. But my advice is to just go ahead and try it. And if you don't like it, then don't push yourself to do it. There are many other things you could do to really make yourself look good on that resume for medical school. So number two, the second best extracurricular that I was involved in during undergrad was I was a NCAA Division III athlete on the track and field team at John Carroll University, and I threw the javelin. Now granted, I wasn't the best on the team or best in probably all of the NCAA, but I was good enough where I was able to compete. And the reason why I actually stopped doing it after doing it for about a year and a half to two years was I really want to focus more on research. And again, I listed previously all the benefits I got out of research, but there are some points in time where I kind of wish that I kind of stuck with it. Definitely though, being on that team was great because I made a lot of really good friends. And on top of that, it was the most shape, like the best shape I've ever been in my life. Not to say that I'm not like 
bad, in good shape now, or like I'm in bad shape, but training with a professional athletic trainer is completely unmatched compared to whatever you're gonna do at home. On top of that, it was great because I was really meticulous and really structured with my schedule. So when you're busy, you don't really have that much time to waste. So I found that I wasn't wasting time that much and my grades were able to reflect that as well. On the contrary, it did take up a lot of time. You're spending about five to six hours of practice a week. Um, on top of that, you were losing all of your Saturdays at meets. So we would live, leave at five or six or seven in the morning and we wouldn't get back until eight or nine or even 10 p.m. sometimes, traveling to other states, traveling down um, to other schools and having conference meets and whatnot. So it was very time consuming. And at the end, I realized that I wasn't going to get that much out of track and field in the long run. It was more of a short term type of gain. So I figured that research is going to be something that will carry through for the rest of my life for the most part. So I really wanted to utilize and optimize that as much as I could. And in order to do that, I had to quit track and focus more time on that. And finally, number three, the best extracurricular that I did during my time in undergrad was I was president of the Muslim Student Society at John Carroll. And what this did for me is it taught me how to be a leader. It taught me how to communicate and work with others. Now, I'm not saying that you need to become the president of your Muslim Student Society, but choose a club, a club that you like, a club that interests you, right? A club that you have a passion for and try to get a leadership position, specifically a president position if you can. And what it did for me was, again, as I mentioned, great way to build communication skills and find a way to work with others and be able to delegate your tasks. So as a president, I don't have the ability to do everything. So I would, you know, tell my other board members that, okay, you do this, you do this, you take care of this, you care, take care of this. And I'd be overseeing it and helping a little bit at each task, right? So what this did was you know, you have that communication aspect of that as you learn, that you learn how to talk with others, you learn how to communicate, you learn how to diffuse any disputes that may happen, right? I also was involved in formulating and working with two other schools to get a program going for over almost 200 people, right? And that took a lot of planning, that took a lot of communication, a lot of coordination, and you can't do that unless you have that type of position. And I'm really glad I had that experience because I know what it takes to be a good leader now. So definitely try and get a leadership position in a club that you're passionate for, in a club that you have a drive for, that you enjoy. Don't do a random club that you know nothing about, that you just saw an opening and you decided to go ahead and take a leadership position for. Because in the end, you're going to regret it and your actions for that club, it's going to show for it and you're not going to get a good experience out of it and as a result, it's going to look not that well on your application or resume when you ask your club advisor for like a recommendation letters. Choose a club that you're passionate for and build on it with a leadership position and see yourself grow. Alrighty guys, now these were the top three extracurriculars that I was involved in that I got the most out of during my time in undergrad. But in the next few videos, I'm going to make a video that's specific to what extracurriculars are really gonna make you stand out as a medical school applicant. That's gonna be evidence-based. I'm gonna go through studies and research that show if you do these extracurriculars, you are going to get into medical school. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.